my stitchy friends. I'm Christy. I'm the Crosshatch Quilter and this is Gus. Welcome back to my sewing and stitching room. I'm here to talk to you about my stitching today. It is Friday, November 12th and this is floss tube number 18. I hope that you've been having a great fall. We, I just love fall. It's been the prettiest year this year with all the vibrant colors and it's just been so much fun. Gus has enjoyed it because we've been taking him on lots of walks and he likes that it's <laughs> he likes that it's not too cold or too hot outside. He doesn't overheat and he can go for a lot longer for, uh, for longer walks with us. Um, I've changed out my decor. The Halloween is down and we put up our fall Thanksgiving decor and just been soaking up the very last of autumn. Um, so I hope that wherever you live, you've been enjoying some color changes and that you don't have snow quite yet. I have, um, I'm really looking forward to Thanksgiving this year. I, my son is coming home from college to visit and so we're super excited for that. He's already put in, <laughs> his big head keeps getting in the way. I'll turn him like this. Um, he's already put in his food requests. He wants raspberry fluff, which is basically raspberry cheesecake, um, homemade, and then he wants homemade lemon bars. So I'll make sure to get those made for him. He, I'm sure, misses homemade food um, and his family, of course. <laughs> so we've just been enjoying the fall weather and um, I am wrapping up my autumn stitching, but I... I'm kind of sad about it. I I think that next year, part of my plans are going to be that I'm going to put fall stitching throughout the year so that I have more fall smalls um, to put out in a dough bowl. And so that's been part of my planning. I've been pulling out all of my like stash and holiday stitching and just making a plan for next year. So in a future video, I will do that. I'll go through a whip parade and go through my plans for um, next year. So today I have some frame, some pieces back from the framer and I have some finishes, whips, new starts, haul, happy mail, and a giveaway. So I'll put this big guy down and we'll get started. I forgot to talk about the quilt behind me when I was holding Gus to give you a little bit more details about it. Um, this is all fig tree fabrics. It's from their tapestry line. It's an older line. I'd say it's about 10 years old. It's of course in all of my favorite fall colors. When I made this, I didn't follow a pattern. I just used the Creative Grids ruler, the pineapple ruler, and you just make each individual block. And then I um, put a sashing border around it and then a big, uh, big border. And I absolutely love it. It's one of my very favorite quilts and definitely in my favorite colors. I look forward to bringing it out each year. So much so that um, this year when I hung it up, I decided that I needed to make it a matching project bag. <laughs> and um, I have a new fall project that I am looking forward to starting next year. So I thought, well, I'll make a new project bag. So this is my new project bag out of Tapestry by Fig Tree Fabrics. So pretty. Um, so I have some finishes and pieces back from the framer I wanted to share with you first. The first one is, so last time I talked about having a stitch rotation and kind of tweaking what I've been doing so that I can fit in more smalls but also stay more focused and not start so many things and not be so squirrely. I had so many whips that that were out and just always, you know, staring at me that I felt guilty and they were kind of stressing me out. So I went through all of my plans or I went through all of my whips and made plans for next year of what I want to work on and focus on so that I just don't be so squirrely and I can have more finishes. Um, and as much as I love the process of stitching, I enjoy having finishes as well. So I've been working on a stitching rotation where Monday through Thursday, I stitch 
on a focus piece, whatever that is that I've chosen to be at that time. My current focus pieces right now are Anne Rayner, um, a new start that I'll show you here in a little bit, and um, any The Gather In by Plum Street. I've been working on that. And then on Fridays, I've been stitching on Hawkrun Hollows. Um, my autumn at Hawkrun Hollow is what I'm currently working on. And then on Saturdays, I work on a small. And then on Sundays, I do another focus piece. Um, Consider the Lilies is one of them that I have on the list. I would like to work on His Eyes on the Sparrow after I finish Lilies. And then um, probably for the month of December, I will work on Christmas Garden on Sunday. So that's kind of my stitching rotation. But all that to say that it's been working out for me and I have really enjoyed um, trying to just be more focused. The first thing, the first small that I started on and I started and completed it is Tom Turkey Sampler by Heart and Hand. And I stitched this with all the called for everything, but mine does not look like the front of the it just looks red to me and I stitched it with the called for threads but mine is brown but that's totally okay with me I love this color scheme it goes great with fall decor so I stitched this on I believe it's winter's brew 36 count called for thread and there's some little beads and back stitching in there and then I just made it into a pocket so that I can put like fall leaves in here or little picks and I just um, put some Vintage Lace by Lori Holt um, on the bottom of the pillow. And then I just put some homespun on the back. I absolutely love it. And then I just put a little um, acorn here on the side. It's so much fun. So I really have been enjoying stitching smalls and my mindset is always, oh, big project, big, big projects, but the smalls are so much fun and they're very satisfying to get that quick finish in. So I'm really excited to incorporate them. And if I have a day set aside for them, then I'm more likely to do it. I just get focused on my big projects and then I'm like, nope, I can't do any smalls. I don't have time. But in all reality, it's the opposite, right? <laughs> so, okay. So the next piece um, that I finished is Turkey Hollow Farm by Stacy Nash and I will put a picture here of where I was last time and here is my finish. So this is a stitch along that I joined in with um, Olivia from Pumpkin Hollow Quilts and Yvette and this was such a fun stitch to welcome in a fall and oh I just love it so much. I stitch it on um, the called for everything, threads, linen, and I, when I got to the end, I asked my daughter if she wanted me to put in, you know, this border, because of course she's going to inherit all my stuff one day, right? And she goes, yeah, I want, I want the border in there, <laughs> but if I hadn't have stitched the outside, um, surrounding border, it would have fit in this frame perfectly. So this is a frame that my, um, uncle, he made this frame out of his home that he grew up in. So it's a very um, sentimental frame and I'm so it matches this so perfectly. So it looks great in this frame, but I will probably get this professionally framed for next year. But I wanted to pop it in this frame for now so that I could have it up on my wall to enjoy for this fall autumn season. So um, the changes that we've made and I've talked about them before is we added tail feathers to the turkey. Sorry, I'm going to try it. I <coughs> Excuse me. And the rake instead of a gun for the farmer there. I was reading in the chart after I completed it, and Stacy refers to him as a scarecrow in the chart. So maybe he's a scarecrow holding a gun to ward off coyotes coming to get the turkeys I don't know <laughs> so but I absolutely love this and I'm so excited to have it done and I had so much fun stitching with the girls I got some pieces back from my framer and I wanted to share them with you 
The first one I got back last time, but I hadn't shown it to you. I actually put this up for Halloween and then I keep it up through fall and autumn because the colors are just so autumnal. I don't think it screams Halloween. And this is Jack's House by Stacy Nash. I absolutely love this and it was so much fun to stitch it. I believe I stitched it last year. So that is my first one I got back. And then I got back Feast of Friendship by Blackbird Designs. I stitched this on Legacy Linen 36 count with all the called for threads. And Lori and I started this piece together and so many of you joined us um, on the sal. It was so much fun and it definitely made the year 2020 that much better. This is one of my very favorite pieces and I always wanted to stitch it so I was so glad that I finally did. Fall is just, it's my favorite. I can stitch it all year round and not get sick of it. So that is Feast of Friendship. And then my last piece that I got back is um, Grateful, Thankful, Blessed by Brenda Gervais. And I stitched this with all the called for threads on um, 36 Count Wren by Fix for This Plus. The only change that I made is instead of using the called for thread for the words around the border, I used the roof color. I, they just weren't showing up with the called for threads. So I absolutely, I know I say I absolutely love every single one of them, but I do because I wouldn't stitch it if I didn't write. But it's so much fun to have a few pieces back so that I can have a more complete autumn wall. I definitely um, am planning on stitching a lot more falls, fall pieces this next coming year, um, big and small. And I'm really happy with my fall wall so far, but I'm excited to add to it. Um, and I will insert a video here of my fall autumn wall. The first project that I worked on in my new stitching rotation for the Monday through Thursday focus piece, and that was Anne Rayner by Thread Th Threads Through Time. And I'm stitching this with my friend Yvette and my friend Lily. I believe that Lily has decided to restart hers, so um, I'm so glad that she decided to keep going and not give up. Here are, I'm stitching this with all the called for DMC threads. And here is my progress. I'm stitching this on 40 count creme brulee by R&R. &R. And <clears throat> since last time, well, I'll put in a picture here of where I was last time. I've stitched the turkey. I finished the basket of fruit and I came down here and stitched this vine of flowers. So that completes my October assignment and now I'm starting to work on November. The house was part of November and the rest of this vine. I'd already stitched the house and now I have to need, I have to attempt the over one stitching on the baby sheep and then there's a mama sheep here and all of the grass. And then I just need to stitch over the border. So I think that that is a doable 
mountain to climb for November. Um, I'm a little bit nervous about the over one sheep. It's, I can do over one stitching on 36 count pretty easily, but on 40 count it is definitely going to be my challenge. And that's why I had set this piece aside for so long. So stitching it with friends is definitely helping me to just keep going and make sure that I don't give up and just put it in the whip pile. I love this piece so much. It was it was a unicorn chart for many years, so I, I need to finish it, and I will. One page a month, and we'll have it finished next August. That is the goal. Maybe we'll finish it before then, but we'll see. So that is the first one. And then <clears throat> on Fridays, the person that came up with Hawk Run, um, Stitching on Hawk Run Hollows on Fridays is Becky for Socks for Mum here on Floss Tube and Instagram. And so I've been joining her and trying to eat a little chunk of this elephant bite by bite. It is a big, big piece. And it seems like I'll put in hours stitching on this piece and not very much progress, you know, it's definitely one of those pieces that is going to take a long time to stitch. I've got this housed in my autumn bag. And here are the threads. This is the thread conversion from Shepherd's Bush. So yummy. They're so pretty. They're kind of a mess right now. But I, so I made a little bit of progress. I'm stitching this on 36 count straw by Weeks Dye Works. This is the old, this isn't the new Zweigar base. I think that might be part of why it takes me so long. It is definitely not like fast stitching for me. Um, but I came up here and I decided to tackle these corn. I, <laughs> I've been putting them off because they're kind of tedious. And so one night when I was stitching this, um, watching TV with my daughter, I decided to tackle the corn and then I filled in another, I think this bird and the spiders and then this bird up here. So the top part is completely done now. And then I think I did a little bit more filling on this house. And I came over here and I stitched these crows and I tried to work more on the barn. And then I noticed, can you hear Gus snoring? He's in here. He doesn't feel very good today. He has had some tummy issues. So when he doesn't feel good, he wants to be around me. But what I was saying is this is where I got stalled out is I um, was doing the fill in on the barn and the fill in was kind of, or the outline, like this barn door and the windows, they were getting lost and blending in with the fill in color. And so what I've done now is um, grabbed a darker color out of my floss here and I'm just going over it one more time to make sure that there's contrast there. So then I stitched the scarecrow and definitely um, it's going to be a long-term piece, but I do love it. I'm excited to have it on my wall, my autumn fall wall one day. I absolutely love this piece. And that is one that I started with, or I copied Lori when she had started hers up camping and I decided that I needed to do that in the shepherd's bush color conversion as well okay we're starting to get a tower hopefully we don't have a it doesn't fall <clears throat> so then my next focus piece that i have been working the most on is i've been giving it the most love since i finished the turkey hollow farm is the gather in by plum street samplers and i'm stitching this with Lori and lara and here's my lovely threads. I'm stitching with all the called for threads, except I switched the black mascara that it calls for, for um, just NPI 993, NPI silk. And then I switched out the green to pine needles by Classic Color Works. And it just has a little bit better contrast for the piece that I have the piece of linen that I chose to stitch it on. So here's my progress. I have worked a lot on this. Um, 
there's still a lot more to go though. There's a lot of fill in. The, the only thing I have left to stitch on it other than the fill in is I need to bring this fence all the way over. I think I need to stitch a couple more pumpkins over here by Calliope, the horse. And then um, Edna, who is the proprietress of the Gather In, she sits right here on the pumpkin. So I need to stitch her, but I want to save her for very last. And then I was very mature and I started on the over one stitching. And I went back and forth on if I wanted to stitch the over one stitching because, you know, I don't love over one. <laughs> but I decided that their names and just the meaning behind it was so cute that how could I not? So I'm going to be stitching the over one right here under Calliope. And so I'll have to do the fence, the stitching, and the grass, and then fill in the rest of the in. I'm hoping to have this done by Thanksgiving. And I know exactly when I'm going to start as soon as this one's done in its place. And I will share that with you in here in a minute. But I absolutely love this piece. It is. It has been a pleasure to stitch on this fall. And... I just love fall stitching. I know I, I know I say that a lot, but I just do. <laughs> it's hard to think about Christmas stitching when I have just been trying to soak up every last bit of fall that there is. Here where I live, it's a very cold climate. We have about six months of winter, and I'm really not exaggerating. So once winter gets here, it's here for a very long time. So during the day, we've been hitting the 50s still, and it's been so enjoyable. I've We've been going on walks and enjoying every last ounce of fall before that snow and the cold, cold temperatures hit. <laughs> so now I wanted to show you my starts that I worked on, or that I started. The first one is, and this really isn't a start, but um, <clears throat> I started this with a lot of you and my friend, Kathy, who is Kathy Perdone on Instagram, I call her Tazzy because she lives in Tasmania, Australia. Um, I started this with her and I'm stitching it with the Averisois silk, but <laughs> here's my tiny start and I'm going to restart it. I don't like this linen. I just, I got, you know, what, 20 stitches in and I'm like, nope. It's not the right, it's not the right linen for this project. It was just hard to see the holes. The weave is too tight. Um, I don't know, the, there was a lot of reasons, but I decided no. So I've ordered a new piece of linen and when it gets here, I'll show you what my choice was. But So after the Am Grimshaw start was a no-go, I thought about what else could I stitch to join in on Black Sampler November. And I, went through all my whips and I chose this piece. This is out of the Honeysuckle Manor by Blackbird Designs that has been reprinted. And this was a gift from my friend Lily. But I thought that it would be really fun to, oh, I'm trying to cover up the chart, um, to start this and it would be a fun small for Saturday. So I might get this started. This is the piece of um, Autumn Gold by Lakeside Linens with just some NPI Silk 993. That would be a fun little sampler and I know I can get that one done, right? While I was pondering samplers, um, alphabets, and black, black Sampler November, I really wanted to pull this back out and ever since I started this with my um, it's in my car. It's my car trip project, which I haven't put any stitches in it since last time I showed it to you. But I absolutely love this sewing pocket. But when I finish stitching the sampler, I'm not going to turn my stitching into this sewing pocket. It would just cover up too much of the stitching and I want to put it up on my wall. But this pocket just kept coming into my mind. So I decided that I wanted to make some just with sampler fabric. So that's what I did. And the first one I made was for Black Sampler November. And this is Blackbird Designs fabric. I followed the instructions that Stacy 
provided in the chart for a sewing pocket and it is so cute and then I just did a covered button and used that as my button she has I think a vintage button um, on her chart but I decided to just cover a black fabric button I absolutely love this so I'm just gonna be putting this displaying it in my sewing room with some accoutrements and then I I love the stitching spools that everyone makes so I decided to use some of that fabric and just wrapped it around a spool and I just made this like um, you know a pocket so I did that and that will be fun to display with it um, and then last time I talked about how I wanted to join in on the sampler in a jar that Lori Holt is um, doing a stitch along with on her channel um, the hashtag is sampler in a jar so I grabbed some red thread and I started I joined in on that so I did a little puppy dog and a crown and Gus snoring I'm sorry if you can hear that he just doesn't feel good so he doesn't want to be in the other room and then I did a bird with a crown and the bird with the crown is from this, it's one of these little buttons that Stacy shows on this sewing so red work sewing pocket chart. So there's that. And then I did another flower. And this one's not just in all red thread, but I thought that would be fun. And it goes well with all the others. So I will insert a picture here of them displayed. They're so much fun. And then I covered, of course, some red buttons to go along with them. So much fun. I definitely see a lot more um, sampler buttons in my future. They're so much fun. And what I did is I just, I always keep my leftover linens that you know you've cut off from your sampler and I just used scrap pieces so I didn't have to you know you just use up what you've got and then I made um, a sewing pocket out of red and white sampler fabric as well so much fun okay so my last start is part of my happy mail and this is some pretty awesome happy mail I feel very honored to have received it and I'm just humbled by it. But the best way to say thank you that I can think of is to start it immediately and continue to work on it. I am just so excited to be working on this piece. So two very sweet people, and they know who they are, um, gifted me Mary Carr by Needlework Press. And this currently is a um, stitch along and exclusive to the Rocky Mountain um, sampler or sampler guild and I absolutely love 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 this sampler it's it's one of my very favorite samplers I've ever seen as soon as it got here I kitted it up and started it immediately and I am super excited about it um, so thank you again you know who you are I am I'm just I still can't believe it but a new project, this awesome needs a new project bag. So I made it a project bag out of, these are Minikin Simpson fabrics. So, and here are the threads. I'm using most of the called for. I added a few reds. I've added um, country redwood and Buckeye Scarlet to the mix and here is my start I'm stitching this on 36 count creme brulee by R&R &R. this is one of my very favorite linens and I've got almost a page finished the first page I've just got a little bit more border to bring down here and the the top colors are the called for colors and then I added um, Buckeye Scarlet red down there and I absolutely love this it is such a fun 
um, easy chart to follow. It's it's a pleasure, and I'm really excited to um, put this in my rotation. It's going to be a focus piece on my Monday through Thursday stitching. And I am so excited, and I love the reds and greens in it. The color combination, they're just absolutely beautiful colors. I can't wait to get back down to, or I can't wait to get down to this house and the grass with the lady here and all the animals. I know um, what family member I'm going to stitch this for, and I'm going to stitch this in honor of my great paternal grandma, and her name is Caroline Hemingway. I'll put a picture here of her. She has an amazing, amazing story, and when I complete the stitching, um, I'll read you her story. She's She was so, so amazing, but I just thought that this piece reminded me of her because um, she basically was taking care of a farm all by herself. But I'll give you her story um, in a future episode after I finish it, but I am absolutely excited to put this um, stitch this in her name. I will probably change the words up here to represent her life as well. I have some haul and some happy mail and a giveaway to share with you next. So I pre-ordered the new 2022 book of days from Christina Hall Sands Creates. I'm really excited. This is definitely my favorite cover. So, so pretty. Gus is just going to keep snoring and snoring apparently to sing to us today. <laughs> And then I pre-ordered this with um, Lucy, who is the Farmer's Attic on Etsy. And the Snowball by Brenda Gervais. So, so cute. These ones on the back are darling too. And then I pre-ordered from Farmer's Attic Cup of Christmas Cheer. That Santa mug. I had to get that. I have a lot of vintage Santa mugs and new ones as well. I love, love, love them. So I'm excited to get, oh, and I kitted that one up. So I'm excited to put that in as maybe a future small start. We'll see. And then this last one I'm so excited about, and this is going to be my new start to replace the gather in when I finish stitching that. And that is And Heaven and Nature Sings by Kathy Barrick. And I've kitted it up with the called for NPIs, except I replaced the lightest green with a darker green. And I believe I'm stitching this on um, Mayflower by r and &R, 36 count. And then I have some awesome Happy Mail to share with you. Um, Ginny, who is Winter Night Poem on, yeah, Winter Night Poem on Instagram. She contacted me and let me know that she had um, doubles of a lot of charts that she had, um, you know, accidentally bought like we all do. And she would love to share them with us for giveaways. And so she sent me not only charts, but the sweetest card. I love that covered bridge with the trees. She sent me some fabrics. Lori Holt fabrics. And she sent me some little candies that are, she lives in Vermont, so she sent me some maple syrup little candies that are in the shape of a maple leaf. And they were so, so good. I absolutely love them. I'm going to have to order some. And then she sent me a gold leaf. And I've had this displayed um, with my fall decor. I've actually been sticking it in the pocket of the, the Tom turkey sampler. Love, love, love that. Thank you, Jenny. And then she sent us some charts. So the first one is Oh Joyous Day by Blackbird and Pink Hill Manor by Blackbird. <laughs> Waiting for the Harvest by Blackbird. Oh, this one I need to stitch next year. And Santa's House by Prairie Schooler. Plain and Fancy Collection Sampler Bunny. So cute. And then this is another Prairie Schooler, The Night Before Christmas. This chart is absolutely darling. 
and Christmas Samplers 2 by Prairie Schooler. And a few more. She really spoiled us. Um, I don't know how to pronounce this, but it's from Madame Chantilly. And there's Santa and the reindeer. The reindeer's hanging on for dear life. Then Heartstring Samplery, Someday at Christmas. Gus, he is snoring so bad. I'm so sorry. Horse Country Holiday. I love this sampler, or this stitch. I've tried two times to put Gus in the other room because of his snoring in between my takes, and he just, he won't have any of it. He wants to be in here with his mom because he doesn't feel good. He woke up with a sour tummy this morning, so he's been, I think it's his way of telling us that he's not happy about the weather getting colder. <laughs> Me too, Gus. Me too. Okay, and so then um, Betsy Klager, who is here on Instagram and Floss too, sent me the most darling card. And she has been making these um, floss bling, floss rings, um, and selling them and donating the proceeds to an awesome charity. And if you want more information about them, go and check her floss tube out and her Instagram. She has a link to the where to buy these on her Instagram. Um, and like I said, it goes to an awesome charity. So go and check that out. And thank you so much, Betsy. That made my day. You're getting that in the mail. And then I got the cutest card from Daylene, who is so grateful here on floss tube and Instagram. And she sent me some some floss cards of her sweet dog Maisie's cute little snout. Those made me smile big time when I opened them. Um, and then some really awesome Happy Mail from Fat Quarter Shop came and they sent the first box. I was like, oh my goodness. And then another box came like the next day and I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> They're both really awesome. So the first one is this Stitcher's Journal, or that's not what it's called, um, 2022 Be In My Bonnet Planner by Lori Holt. And it comes in the Starling box. And then here is the planner. It is so, so cute. I am so looking forward to using this. So excited. And it goes through the months. Um, as a big, you know, as the whole entire month, but then it goes through week by week. So you have more room to um, fill in your goals, your tasks, um, what you're up to, your to-do lists. It is absolutely awesome. And then it has also additional notes in the back as well. So thank you so much, Fat Quarter Shop. And they sent me a second one to do as a giveaway. So, if you'd like to be entered to um, win your own, just mention the word planner in the comments below and I'll get you entered in for next time's video. Um, they also sent some adorable floss drops by Lori Holt. They're so cute. They're shaped like little eggs. I love them. The little bee on them. I can't wait to use those. And then in a separate package, they sent the most amazing floss storage box. Um, it comes in this awesome box, which I will actually use for like fabric storage. And it's really just heavy duty and good quality. And then they sent this acrylic storage box. And I've had acrylic storage boxes before for like um in my bathroom for my makeup and none of them have been this good quality this is so sturdy and very well made it has their fat quarter shop emblem on the top there sorry for the glare and it has divided drawers to put all of your organize all of your floss in and it will fit their floss drops in it. It will also fit Aurafil floss, um, those little spools in there. It will also fit like gentle art threads, co um, classic color works, and 
um, Weak Dye Works in there as well as DMC. It's an awesome storage unit and I'll definitely be getting some good use out of that. And they um, they didn't skimp on the quality of these. They're, they have little rubber stoppers on the bottom so they don't scratch your table. You could stack several together so that they don't scratch themselves. But it's, it's great, great quality and I'm really looking forward to using that. Um, last video I did a giveaway for a B skep. This was so kindly given by, um, she is Carolina Cross Stitcher on Instagram and her name is Kathy and her husband Peter is the one that makes them. So, so pretty. And the winner for that giveaway is Karen Brasher. So Karen, I will leave a comment on your comment and if you will send me your mailing address, I'll get this out to you. And she is one of those that comments every single um, video. So I was so glad to see that she won. She's been a great cheerleader. And having said that, thank you so much for all of your kind comments and supporting me in sharing my stitching with you. I love this community and it's a pleasure to be a part of it. So thank you so much for all of your friendships. And until next time, happy stitching.